almost falls down. Throws to the end zone. Oh, it's It will change, and I'm not trying to tell you something. Yeah, it's going to change. It's not like that. Okay, but I want you to understand where I'm coming from. It will change. And it will change because they wanted to change, not, not because of me. It will change because they want to be champions. Smith and a gun with Gore in his left hip. Third down, Alex takes the snap. Alex looking down and Shit, storm's coming. Watch yourself. <laughs> I wish the storm would come back somewhere. He's trying. I know. Do you he's, remember he keeps that? Putting it out there. After the Houston disaster, he did a post <laughs> and he said, "I told you the storm was coming." Uh, I just wish somebody would give him a goddamn job. He's trying. He's lobbying for it. I know. He's put it out there. That commercial he made, eight hundred ninety-two days without employment. And he still gets up at 5 a.m. He's jacked. I tell you, he's still fucking well, He's always jacked. been jacked. Yeah, but now, I mean, he's, he's fucking jacked. He should make porno. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I'd watch that shit. Real, like, black power porno? It should be hot. Big afro. <laughs> Piping some queen. Some Nubian queen. <laughs> shit would be so hot. I would buy it. I'd buy the VHS, DVD, whatever you got. Sure fucking laser, laser disc, if the fuck I had to. That's all. It's a market. <laughs> Next. I want you to keep going. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking over here. Yeah. I want to see where that goes. That's it. That's, that's, like, that's where I'd like to see it go. Sometimes it's better to not respond and just <laughs> let him go because what he says next yeah. is even better. Oh, for sure. I've come to realize that it's taken me a while. I used to just react to the first ridiculous no, thing. Oh, you gotta wait. But I know if I wait, I might get another ridiculous thing and then another ridiculous <laughs> it's thing. Like, it's like peeling an onion, Steve. <laughs> just saying. Anyway. Do you all think that he could make money doing that? And then you gotta revisit it. Who wants to get into the injuries? Yep. Go back. Come, circle back. <laughs> He's never gonna play in the NFL again. I don't think or so, no. Everyone. There's just not. There's no reason at this point. But I mean, it's it's still not going to stop me from talking about Nathan Peterman, Geno Smith, EJ Manuel. Oh no, wait! If all he, those fucking if he clouds. goes to the XFL and wins a Super Bowl there, whatever they call he it, he won't. Uh, okay. He won't go anywhere else. Yeah, I could see him going XFL. Vince McMahon doesn't. doesn't give a fuck about Roger Goodell. No, I'm saying he won't do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think he will. Yeah, I could see that. I don't think he will either. CFL. No, I don't think. He'll no, do he won't do anything I think it's NFL except for, or for NFL or nothing. That's my guess. Yeah. I think so too. Because he could have, he could have gone somewhere by now for Agreed. sure. Agreed. He could yes. have did the AAF or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they would have taken him for sure, in just his, for the publicity. I mean, and the, for sure. In his mind, he has nothing to prove because he's he's proved more than every single backup in the entire league right now. He has road playoff games check, home playoff games check, First Super Bowl in the Super Bowl. Yeah, like barely, like inches away from winning the Super Bowl check. No? Actually, I shouldn't say that. That the AAF would have taken him for sure because I don't know who was around. They that. were a pretty like the, the, tight with the NFL. Well, and the like, person, not, not only that, but the person running it might have been a Trumpy. Bill Polian. Yeah, yeah could have been total. A, total could, have, could have just been a for guy. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. Uh, McMahon would hire him in a second. He would. Yeah, yes. he's not without he's got a guy. doubt. He would do it on purpose. He, he, yeah, he'd probably kneel. even if he didn't think he could play. He'd, he'd probably do. kneel just to get him to sign. I could see him paying <laughs> like. A hundred million, just come play a game because that will be yeah. literally every single football fan on the planet would watch Colin Kaepernick because in an XFL you game know because there's every, people that want him to succeed and there's people that want him to fail. More people, more you're ra- either one or the other. More racists would tune in to be like, "I knew that motherfucker oh my God. could do it." Yeah. That oh, might yeah. get more viewership than the Super Bowl. I'm not kidding yeah. because there's Kaepernick haters that aren't even football fans and don't even watch the mm-hmm. Super Your Bowl. Your stepmom might watch. 
Probably. That would be, oh my god, you could pay him $100 million and make your money back after one game at this point. Let's start a league, Steve. I think right. I want to get... sole purpose is to get Kaepernick to play one play game. Play so one game. Rich. That's it. I want to get a Colin Kaepernick, like... Um, Why don't you get one of those New Jerseys he's putting out, where it's just like a black and white... Because they sell seven. out immediately. You can't. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, I want to get... I'm surprised like, you don't have one. I, Why doesn't he just do a podcast and get rich? He does things. He if does, he started a podcast, he, he would be rich. He does speaking like, like, engagements where he probably makes a quarter of a million dollars in a night, like, like big money. Yeah, yeah. If he started a podcast, though, he would make multi millions of dollars. Yeah, he would. More with Nike than I want to get a. Of course, but there's no reason. That's not stopping him from podcasting. <laughs> yeah, I want to get a realistic Colin Kaepernick like a portrait tattoo just to show my, my father's wife. Mm. Just to be like, look at Full this. Afro? Yeah, the whole, yeah. But like with an African flag, Kneeling. like with all the African nation flags behind them. Kneeling with that, the pig socks you, on? Yeah, with one black, <laughs> with, one, with, the, with the fist in the air, for sure. Cool. Put it on your beard right here. What are you doing, Steve? I'm trying to get out this super old cough drop that's old. coming. It just got hot a couple times. Okay. Mm. And I got that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good hands, done. Steve. I'll still leave it. Guess Steve's playing defense. It's, it's my only one. Great hands. Floor, floor is relatively clean. It All right. Cleaned. We've gone way too long without talking about injuries. D Ford. Dead. Uh, he's going to miss another week after getting treatment done on his knee. And Shanahan talked about it uh, last week on the radio. He said that it's something that he's done throughout his four-year career numerous times. He gets an injection in his knee. It's something that he's been dealing with ever since he came out of college. This is going to take up this whole episode. What? All these injuries. Yeah, it might. Oh, and um, joke. he said that if they didn't do it now, they'd have to do it during the season and then have him recover during the season. So they chose to do it now. So that way, by the time week one rolls around, he's ready to go. And then hopefully it lasts the duration of the season. Bosa. Likely to miss the entire preseason with an ankle injury. And Shanahan said that they were lucky that it wasn't more severe. He said that there was a 300-pound body that landed on it in a run play. At, or initially, they thought it might have been something much more serious, like a severe high ankle sprain or even like a fractured fibula, which is what our backup left tackle suffered during the game the other night. And it, Shanahan said that after the game, the injury that happened to our tackle that got taken away in an air cast looked very similar to what happened to Bosa in practice. Well, he's not injury prone. Who? Our backup tackle? No, Bosa. No. No, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. hard to it's hard to argue against that he's been a Niner for he's been he's practiced with the Niners for what twenty days total and he's got hurt twice now. Yeah, and I mean he was drafted by you know the injury monsters. Yeah. Anyway, don't want to get too negative. Most of these players are. I gotta tell you, I on was, track to come back for week one or very I gotta, early on. I gotta tell you, I was gonna come. I when you sent the Trent Taylor thing. I thought it happened during the game. Not that it makes it any better, but I was prepared to come in here in full meltdown mode. <laughs> I was just like, it's never going to end. It feels like that. I, I feel like I'm in a fucking Twilight Zone. They literally fired their entire health staff or, or um, strength and conditioning staff and uh, doctor. Like they, they revamped their entire fucking program there well, this offseason to try and fix this. And it, it, sh- it just shows no signs of slowing down. But the positive of it is that we have yet to have anybody very important out for the year. Everybody's on track to return. It's if a good, it's not, a good thing to say out loud, Steve. Yeah, I know. But anyway, you brought up Trent Taylor. He's it was, got a bolt in his foot. It was yeah, it's he'll so be back. strange. He'll be back for week one. Yeah. It was revealed during the broadcast. Because I, I ended up getting the... Um, I know most people ended up getting the Cowboys broadcast. Because they're the fucking Cowboys. But I got lucky. I ended up finding a stream that was uh, the Niners broadcast with Greg Papa, which was interesting to hear his first game. Hmm. You didn't just watch it on NFL Network? No, I don't have TV. So oh. he's the guy on KNBR and the voice of the 49ers. Yes, he is the new voice of the 49ers. He Ted took over not, Ted Robinson. Ted did that, but he wasn't. He didn't have the show on K- KNBR. Ted so would, Papa's got both. Ted would occasionally take a day here and there to go do KNBR. Right, but Papa's got but Papa's show. Papa's been in the radio business <clears throat> for years, and he's <clears throat> been... Yeah, he's been doing both for a very long time now. Interesting. But, yeah, I mean, uh, the 
going from Ted to Papa, Ted was more like uh, charismatic, cerebral, whereas Papa's more like X's and O's. X's and O's, a little rough around the edges. So yeah. it's just a completely different style. It's only a matter of time until he says something really stupid. Yeah, probably. Well, that, I think that's what got him fired at his last. Yeah, place. of course. I'm, I, in the limited time I've heard him talk, it's going to happen. Yes. So anyway, uh, Trent Taylor. It was revealed during the broadcast. No, nobody tweeted this out. There wasn't a reporter that caught whiff of this. It was during a broadcast when John Lynch was in the booth with them talking that Trent Taylor suffered a broken foot the day before. Now, broken foot sounds pretty severe. He ended up getting surgery on it, and then later on, it wasn't clarified until later on that it was actually just a stress fracture on the side of his foot and ended up being his pinky toe. And had he continued to play with the fracture, the fracture would have expanded over time and gotten worse. So they decided to take care of it now. And so that way it's done, it's over with, and then he's on track to return week two, three, four. Instead of playing, he could play through it, but it's just going to keep getting worse and then he's going to be shut down for the year. Uh, yeah, okay, Jarek McKinnon. So, that's that. can't believe anything they say, Steve. They're all liars. I mean, that, that's a valid point, but it's my responsibility to report what they say. Okay. <laughs> it's my responsibility to tell these people... They're liars. You could very well be true, and I partially agree with you. Allegedly. They're alleged liars. Jason Verrett also sustained... Uh, there was one day that our entire defense died. The Bosa, Jason Verrett was another one. He sustained a pretty serious ankle injury that will hold, will hold him out for the entirety of the preseason, and they're planning for a week run to turn, but when you hear people talking about his ankle compared to Bosa's ankle, they're making it sound like Verrett's ankle is worse than Bosa's, but they're both on track to be back for week one. So I don't know if they're trying to downplay Bosa's injury because of the yeah, perception that he's injury prone. Or just to make the other team prepare for him being there. But Verrett is, Verrett is just a glass. Yeah. Like, he's just a wine glass. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing with these people. But, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a low risk, high reward payoff with Verrett. Wait, why don't we get to talk about McKinnon? Right now. Okay. McKinnon needed to have a, a PRP yeah. treatment in his knee. And this is going back a few days. I, I did this a few days ago, and it said that it will require two weeks of recovery time. The chance of him, I said that the chance of him ever playing for a meaningful snap for this team is getting slimmer, and they're planning for week one. Then they came out today that, let me get to it. It is right here. Tell me, Poppy. It was uh, from Barrows tell me, that tell me. he is projecting McKinnon to start the season on IR, which will end up going all the way until week eight. There's a window where he can be designated to return. But putting him on IR right now frees up a roster spot for us. So there's no point in keeping him. If he's not going to be ready to go until week four. Then you keep a Jalen Hurd. Then you're going four weeks Dang of him just yeah. wasting a roster spot. So I don't think he's ever going to play a game a down right. for this team. PRP is platelet-rich plasma? Is that yeah, what PRP is? Yeah, I, I couldn't. I didn't know what how to pronounce it, so I just did PRP. Yeah, I think it's platelet, yeah. platelet-rich plasma. Yep. It's just like your own blood. Yeah. They, they, they spin it's it? semi yeah. new. It's something that's kind of new. It's a recovery thing. Just yeah. speeds up recovery. Yeah, and had, I like, think that was results. what Peyton had to go to Germany to do yeah, years could, ago. Used to be able to in his neck? Here. He got that done in his neck? I believe so, years oh, ago. But they wouldn't that, do it here in the States, and now they must be. That and stem cells, like stem cells, you can get it here, yeah. but it's not as beefy. Most people will go to Panama because they'll fucking, <laughs> they'll just go balls out. In they, give it a, they give it them good stem yeah, cells. Yeah, like whatever the. <laughs> Whatever the limit is in in the states, you go to Panama, they just go fucking jack oh, yeah. you Whatever up, doggy. Here jack you up on the stem cell, yeah. baba. All right, I'm good to go. Yeah, I I don't see McKinnon ever playing a snap for this team. That's just I I've already come to the conclusion he's not going to play for this team. So if he does, then that's just found money in my book. If they told you like the fountain of youth was like drinking the like the afterbirth after your wife gave birth, <laughs> would you fucking dive in or what? Would I dive in? No. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to live forever. Oh, okay. Huh. Didn't drink it. No, I wouldn't drink it. Would you? You would? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't know. No children <laughs> here. <laughs> no, no, there's no kids. Did Jess do it? I mean, you call her baby. No, so. no, there's no kids here. And there's no placenta drinking going on. Not placenta, but well, whatever. After laundry. birth. The Aju. The, the reason you're saying that you would is because you've never experienced it in person. Oh, yeah. Anyone, anyone yeah. I know that's had a no. 100%. They said, like, you haven't seen anything. No, you have no fucking idea. Hold on. But, I just don't want to. 
Regardless of what it looks like, if you're telling me... I have, I could, I'm not remotely talking about what it looks like. <laughs> just the everything problem. What are you talking about? We'll save that for you to find out one day. <laughs> it's never going to happen. Never gonna happen. <laughs> no, because he sniffed. Yeah. So, but nevertheless, I'm just saying, regardless of whatever the allure is, um, <laughs> I would... If you tell me that I could go back in time, sir, some or whatever the fountain of youth might be, I well, there's I, going back in time, and then there's fountain yeah. of youth, completely nope. different things. Yes, very, much, very much different, different things. <laughs> time travel and living forever are definitely not the same. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. The fountain of youth is well, that's like forever. time traveling into the future, Steve. Right. I don't know what. Right. We're, yeah. I don't know what we're trying to achieve with the with the, the with the any any person that's ever experienced childbirth would say, I'll wait until they figure out a way to, to do it without <laughs> having to do that. Yeah. Because it's, if they're that far, they're going to figure out how to get it out of there and then, yeah. in, what in about, short time. What yeah. about a Super Bowl? No, absolutely not. <laughs> again, again, never. You, you have an experience. would rather suck a dick. <laughs> I, I didn't say yes to that either. <laughs> for the record. For the record. Well, for the record. We'll have to put it to a vote. I mean, I would take a There's shot. There's a lot of things I would do. A shot glass for a Super Bowl. See, here's the thing. There's nothing that I would do if you said, do this, and then they'll win the Super Bowl. Because the allure, the joy of winning the Super Bowl is, is that watching they did the it. game yeah. and watching them win the Super Bowl and knowing that they were going to do it because I, it, it takes all that out of them. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. There's no, nothing. Like, if you were like, give the me The thrill 20, is gone if you already know the outcome. If you said, give me $20 and they'll win the Super Bowl, they'd be like, oh, cool, might as well. Yeah. It's just because. Yeah. But it would almost ruin the whole season for me because I know the outcome. Yep. But hey, if, I mean, if you guys want an excuse to suck some dick, <laughs> do, your, do your fucking thing, you know? Be, oh, I backtracked on that, all right? Yeah, be you, you know? Really? Live your life. You just ruined my life. <laughs> Live your life. Wow. So you're this, telling me that this is not the fountain of youth. Wow, I, my life has just been, my balls have just been cut off. All right, back to the injuries. <laughs> Kwan yeah. Williams ended up having to get a knee scope. Of course he did. And he will be sidelined for the entire preseason. They're planning for a week one return. Weston Richburg, he is still on the PUP list recovering from a torn quad that he played with for a majority of last year. He ended up getting surgery on it. That's the preseason cunt puppy list. It's concerning that this is taking so long because I went back to an article in April after he got his surgery done, and he said, yeah, we're definitely planning for the start of training camp as far as his recovery time. We're halfway through training camp, and he hasn't done a single thing to my knowledge. Hmm. That's concerning. We paid him like an elite center. We need him to be an elite center because our backup center ain't cutting it. Mm. Well, we need a backup center then. Yes. What's good is that we what have What was a, Richburg's injury? A torn quad. Oh, yeah. He played through it, and he wasn't that great last year, if you remember, but it was revealed after the season that since from week four and on, he played the entire season with a torn quad. Mm. But I'm he was expected to George be back Kittle by now. George played with broken ribs and set records. He did. A lot of pussies out there. I think cracked ribs and torn quad are a little different. I agree, but if you're going over the middle as a tight end with cracked ribs, oh yeah, everybody else. I, I've had cracked ribs before. It fucking hurts. Well, let me tell you something. Garnett's got a finger. Yeah. <laughs> Dislocated ring finger. <laughs> fucking. I oh could, my god. I could fucking. So, um, what am I getting to here? Oh, uh, back to Kyle's uh, radio segment. They asked him about the preseason, and he, he said that if he had the option to choose between four preseason games and zero preseason games, he would choose zero games. No question, he said. No question. He does not care for the preseason. He goes, I mean, he goes, if you really, if it was up to me, I would just bring it to two preseason games, have one game to evaluate guys that are on the bubble, and then have one game to knock some rust off a little bit of, you know, uh, starters and backups but that's it and he also said that he values the practices I that they have more than the games anyway yeah i think you should i think as far as i think it should be two games and then maybe more joint practices so like i already looked at the preseason as pretty meaningless but i still watched it now after he said that our head coach says he cares more about practices than he does a preseason game that just that's just taking a t- taking a preseason game with a, a, a grain of salt even lighter than I already was. The head coach doesn't care the about the preseason Steve, game. I got to tell yeah. you, 
I had a long week at work, and it felt so good just to, like, jet baby was out. I just had the whole bed to myself, me and the cats, and I just slept right through it. It was nice. You yeah. try it. I, t- I didn't make it through the game. I, had, I woke up the next morning and finished it. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, I couldn't. They're saying, too, they're talking about extending the season and making, like, if there's 18 games, say, but the players can only play 16. Yeah. That's, so you have to, like, yeah. rotate. They'd have to probably up the roster. That sounds pretty And then whack. you'd have to, like, plan. It would go. It would be much more chess mm-hmm. because, like, you'd have to plan your, your yeah. breaks for guys, and then stuff would happen that would throw that off. Like, you'd be like, okay, week seven, we're going to sit the running back. Mm-hmm. But then week five, the running back gets dinged up, and you're like, well, I guess we're going to sit him in week six now. Right. It would throw all, it'd be a fucking nightmare. Yeah, right? that sounds and then, yeah. pretty fucking whack. And then the team's just whack. trying to go balls out the first 16 to get their playoff spot and yep. then sit them at the end. Yeah. Like, they're, it's, it's much more chess. I don't like it. Yeah, that, that sounds whack. I don't like it at all. I mean, certain coaches would just be fucked. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, certain guys would be all fucked up. Ugh. I mean, you're, you're already playing. I mean, if the NFL wanted to go, like, an extra week, and then have an extra buy for every team. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. I think the players would probably like that extra because that bye week usually rejuvenates yeah, split everyone. What's the difference? Make them get two one buys. one more game and two buys. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. Party on, Wayne. Uh, this past game, it, it didn't exactly showcase. They got Tavarius Moore at free safety. Now they moved him from corner to safety. This game didn't. Re- I didn't really see him. It's hard to see a safety unless he's involved in. The, sometimes safety involved in the game a lot. Sometimes he's not. This game didn't really showcase him because he, nothing really happened that made him stand out one way or the other. He did have a really bad penalty in the final two minutes of the game, though. Well, they had Gave him a free 15 yards that they almost ended up tying the game and sending it to overtime. But um, some quotes after the game based on you know players that were on the field. By all accounts, he actually had a decent game. And this is what Sherman said. Uh, he said, playing him at corner was trying to force a square peg into a round hole. It's just more natural for him to play in space and see the game from an angle of the safety and not be cooped up to one side or one person. He can get anywhere. He can cover space. He covers so much ground, and you saw that today. So, Okay. That's a pretty strong statement. All right. Square peg round hole. He's basically saying that they wasted a year of his career. <laughs> but he came back and said... Uh, he said playing corner for a year definitely wasn't a waste at all because now I know how to better help the corner. Mm. I know what their responsibility is, so I know how to help them more than I would if I would never played corner, didn't know what their responsibility exactly was. I so. mean, it makes sense if you're back there to know, at least know, to be educated on it. I mean, to know it is probably better than, you know what I mean? Yep. I would say that's a positive. And that's why you see like a lot of uh, former quarterbacks end up being wide receivers and Colin Bolden quarterback turned into a wide receiver originally quarterback yeah. and then there was ryan Tannehill, originally a wide receiver turned into a corner uh, quarterback because he's white because he's white prior yeah prior went back <laughs> yeah prior uh quarterback to wide receiver so anyway let's see what else i got here kind of talked about pettis the, the negative beat around him he's got a He's got to show out in these games a little bit. I mean, he played last week, but he didn't he didn't really get targeted, didn't really do anything. I only saw one positive thing from the past game. Somebody posted a Twitter clip of him juking some guy out of his shoes on a route, but he didn't get the ball thrown to him. Are you are you done listing the injuries? Um let me check. Nope, Sean Coleman, our backup swing tackle. We talked about that, but just to reaffirm it, he was taken out of the fucking stadium in air cast. He had to get uh Surgery to fix a fractured tibula and a dislocated ankle. Definitely done for the year. Uh, Raheem Mostert needed to be evaluated for a concussion, but he did not return, and there's no further updates on that. And DJ Jones left the game, and he was questionable to return with a knee injury, and he did not return. That is, I believe, it for injuries. So uh, I'd like to address both of you being sour on our training staff and all these injuries. Yeah. You listed 10 injuries. Seven of them are guys that have had injuries their entire career or since we got them. Mm -hmm. Or it's the same exact injury since last year. And the three that are new are the broken tibula, which I think is a freak. Yeah, it's broken bone. Mostert. Yeah. Which, who knows where that's at. And DJ Jones. Everything else you listed was existing from last year. Or a guy that was out all of last year with a different injury. Mm-hmm. You know, Trent Taylor had a back all last year. Now he's got a pinky toe. Mm-hmm. So 
I think it goes back more to the drafting and trading than the training staff this year. Well, that's what, yeah, or, I, I or, agree with that, though. Or the hopes, because if we knew when we signed all these guys that they weren't going to be ready until later, then that's different. Mm-hmm. But when we got them all and said they're going to be ready for next year, and now they're not looking to be ready, mm-hmm. that's where it gets a little. Yeah, like we heard that's how, where it gets a little shady to me. Yeah, we heard how great Trent Taylor was looking all uh, last week. Well, right? he did. Like, yeah. So and what then the he fuck? broke his foot. And it could be just freak too. I mean, if he didn't have any back injury yeah. last year, then he goes on the other list of freak first time injuries. Yep. But only because he missed so much last year, you go, is it him or it, if Jimmy Ward goes out and breaks his arm? We don't go, that's a freak arm break. We go, that's fucking Jimmy Ward. That's right. what he does. Right. But if some other person, I'm not going to make a name because I'm not being responsible when it happens, goes out and breaks their arm, then we go, that's a freak fucking thing. I will say that. If I, Kyle Shanahan goes out. Yeah, yeah. Never he's never him. had it, and then all of a sudden it happens. Let so him break, let it's, him. it's a weird gray thing. Yeah, I know? know. It'd be funny if he broke his arm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't... I mean, I pay attention to the rest of the league, but I not so much... Uh, I do and I don't, so I can't really say, like, every team deal with this. Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know. Well, and, like, so, uh, pick a team. You know, if, if the Cowboys lost Dak Prescott, mm-hmm. we would all know about it. Yes. If the Cowboys lost Zeke Elliott, we'd all know about it. Yep. If the Cowboys lost their possible backup center, we wouldn't know shit about it. Or starting center. Or any starting wide center. receiver that's not Amari Cooper. Yeah. We wouldn't know about it. You yeah. know, like... It's hard to say whether other teams are dealing with the same thing we are. Yeah, it's but at the same tough. time, every single time somebody talks about the 49ers, it, the, the, the vibe is always, oh my God, can these injuries stop? Yeah, so and, it and makes me think that it is just us. No, there's, or there's is it damage teams, control? There's other teams. Not that, just us, but yeah. There's a couple other teams that are – the Chargers are one of them. Yep. There's uh, – I don't know – Offhand, the Giants they deal with it a lot. Yeah, um, but then other teams, you know, you know, there's other teams like New England <laughs> who's under such a spotlight that you know when somebody out of their one of their starters yeah. is out. You know what I mean? And I don't think it happens nearly like it does with you know the Niners, the Giants, the, for whatever fucking reason. I don't know. It's, it's bizarre. But and you know, you can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. We we also. Uh, who's our? Who would you say are the top two players on our offense? The quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo G and Staley. Over Kittle. Oh yeah, Kittle. Garoppolo and Kittle. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking a fifth round draft pick and a second round draft pick. That's yeah. what we caught. That's what it cost us for our two best. So there's like this, you know, like it's like I know. Yeah, we took these risks that didn't pay off, but we also found this gold for nothing. I know. You know? So it's like, it's a weird thing. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, how, how many teams' two best offensive weapons are a second-round draft pick and a fifth-round draft pick? Mm-hmm. Probably not much. And at the same time, it's like D. Ford and Nick Bosa are both hurt, but you there is literally nothing John Lish could have done better to upgrade our pass rush than right. go out and get D. Right. Ford and Nick Bosa. Like, for sure. Literally, like, that was the... yeah. Picture the least risky, the most yeah it, yeah. He couldn't. He he didn't pass up this this other guy that was just a pillar of health. Hundred percent for these two guys. They were the best available. The best. There's I don't. And like the D Ford one, that's preventative. That's actually supposed. I think to that's make, more just him being a veteran. He knows his body. Well, I think that, the, and they're saying like losing him for the four post preseason games prevents it from being a problem all season. Yeah, like it's one of those. That's the vibe that they're and, giving, and you know that could be salesman. That could be bullshit. Yeah, who the fuck knows? Mm, pussy farts. There is a, a really good article on uh, if you're subscribed to the Athletic. If you're not, I'll just fucking copy and paste and send it to I, you. Yeah, I will, which one? Uh, the Dre Greenlaw article about uh, how he met Bowman two months ago when Bowman came to the facility, and he was eyeing him up. And he was like, "Man, how much do you weigh right now?" And Bowman was like, 230. He was like, "All right, well, how much did you play?" At? He goes, "Oh, most of the time I played at 250." But I got down to as low as 235, and he was like, I'm 235. He goes, yeah, man, that's a misconception in this league. You don't need to be 250 to be a thumper. You could play right where you are and be a thumper. You just got to be smart, and you got to know how to hit. And he kind of took that and ran with it, and he talked to him some more, and the article goes on deeper than that, yeah. obviously, but it's a, it's a good piece if you get I'm around sure, to reading it. I'm sure that 15 pounds adds a ton of speed at that position. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. to play sideline to sideline, so I would have, what the fuck do I know? But Yep. All right. 
and I think that is about all I got. I do have a mystery quote. Oh. Yeah. Because... It's a little pre-game. This is a topic that we just have to touch on. It's a little pre-game warm-up. Pre-season warm-up. So the quote goes, this is a player, if I leave, will the fans still love me? Oh. Come on. This is the best I could Colin do. Cameron. I know it. You know it? Current player? Current player. If I leave, leave... Leave. <laughs> if I leave, love me. Antonio Brown. Trying to get yep. like, uh. Antonio. Yeah, I knew it, so I wasn't gonna ruin it. Yeah, I was trying to think of the context, like leave the I league, just, leave the team, I just leave that's the. A very drama queen statement. So. Yeah. yeah. He is. There is no way you can convince me that this guy is mentally stable after his actions over the past eight months of his life. The helmet's crazy. The there helmet is, is something is... mentally wrong with him. The helmet is the icing on the cake. The helmet's only the icing on the cake because it's him. Right. <laughs> because if... if uh, Tom Brady wanted to use his old helmet. Anyone that you respect that hasn't had problems in the past, you would go, this is a guy that's worried about his safety, mm-hmm. and that's why he's standing on his head over this helmet issue. If Tom he Brady took like a hard stand about the you helmet... Would, you would be on his team... Yeah, hundred percent. Because you go, this is a guy that must have done research and is worried about his own safety. He knows what's best and his for brain him. Yeah, not yeah, getting. Yeah, yeah. Typically, he never causes it's, problems. It's only because it's Antonio Brown. He's standing on the table for this 100%. one thing, and he's worried about his future. That's what you would think. Yeah, yeah like you know, at some point, because their brains are their brains are becoming at bush. Some they're smashing point, their heads together. He's got to just shut the fuck up and like do his job. And he's just... That's not going to happen. No, it's never. not. That's a never going to happen it's crazy. Issue. Well, did you see the report that came out today? Antonio Brown might have a checkmate on the league. I didn't think so until this report came out today. About he, the helmet? They, the ra- Him and the, the Raiders are saying that if Antonio Brown switches helmets to the new ones that they want him to wear and his head gets hurt, that they're going to hold the league accountable for it. Ooh, nice move. That is a, that is a checkmate That's right there. right there. I'm like that's a solid move. Motherfucker's going to get a get what he wants again. The Raiders are so sketchy. This guy has Always. never been told no. He just backed him the whole time. And All this helmet shit. He Groom's better fucking him. produce for him. Imagine he just busts. How good is he going to be if he busts? And the in the feet that was weird. Like like I barely the helmet thing took over the whole weekend. I barely remember his fucking feet. Pretty wild. They looked... What a fucking head case. Th- those feet looked fucking vile. And I would have taken him over OBJ. I don't think so anymore. No fucking way. I, I mean, fuck OBJ, but... Yeah, I was... No, I'm not gonna... I'm gonna say I was wrong there. Still uh, don't want OBJ, I, but... I, man, I, yeah, I'd rather have OBJ than AB right now. I don't want either one of them. Neither they're do both, I. They're both drama. They're both head case. They're both nonstop something going on. But ultimately, it feels like OBJ actually wants to play football. See, yeah. I didn't think so, but maybe. I mean, Antonio Brown has said numerous times over the past year that he does not need to play anymore, that he's already made his money. He could walk away right now. But that is bullshit because he is addicted to the fame. And the minute that he walks away from the game, your popularity goes way down. Yeah, he's not going to have much of a career after the NFL, I don't think. He's not that type of guy. He, I don't think he's ever... He wasn't on the team when they won the Super Bowl last time either. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think he gives a flying fuck about a Super Bowl. No, I he was. He, he was, but he wasn't a prominent player yet because in 2010, he was a six-round draft pick. I think he. I think Antonio Brown would rather lead the league in, in receptions and touchdowns than win yes, a Super Bowl. Yes, 100%. Which is exactly why I don't want him. 100%. George Kittle would rather catch one catch all year and get a Super Bowl. But you guys agree with me? That was that was kind of like a checkmate today. That's a good move. That is solid. a fucking wow. I'm sure you can't really hold them responsible, yeah, but I mean, but it's still a solid a statement to make the fans yeah. go. Ooh, should, yeah, yeah. Should be curious yeah. to see yeah, what the lawyers come back with. Yeah. All right. So what do we? Yeah, then, uh, well, what do we got? I hope if we allow him to use his helmet and he hits someone else and they get hurt. Then we're holding him responsible. I mean, I'm know, the, like it's ooh. it's the same thing. You know? ooh. I don't know. I'm the kind of person that loves telling people that are entitled no. Yeah. So, like, I would love for them to make him switch. That's yeah. just what I'm rooting for. He says I he agree. ain't going to play. He seems stubborn enough to not play. Oh, which he's made I, which the would statement. be so great that the Raiders yeah. just traded for him and signed him to big money. I've always I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for Gruden just because he's a bit of a maniac. Oh, so do I. I but, have zero. But 
I'm losing it day by day because yeah. of the decisions he's making and the people he's bringing in. And the Did you guys doing. happen to watch Hard Knocks last week? No. Not one minute. But I can tell you for sure that Mayock can suck all of the dicks in the world. Wow. And the fact that he's the GM there makes me want that fucking place to just burn. Why? He's just a douchebag. He sucks. Everything about him. I, I'm not a fan. I'm, I'm indifferent. Not a fan. But on Hard Knocks last week... Um, they drafted a safety in the first round. Safety I really liked a lot, Jonathan Abram. He's he's a thumper. He in practice, I don't know if they had pads on or not, but he's he's basically hitting his own players in practice, and they keep telling him to stop, and he's not stopping. And Gruden pulls him aside and tells him, "Look, like in a nice way, he's like, look, you you can't be hurting our players." And Abram started barking back at him, like, "Like this is what I do, like." This and Gruden, like, if you saw videos of Gruden with the Bucks, he was a he was a fucking maniac. Like, he wouldn't take that oh. shit. I think he's soft now. Fonte's perfect. I think. 2. I think. 0. Is he there? Where That's is what this he? asshole's gonna be? I mean, people always said, "Will he survive in the league today?" Because he went so long without coaching that the game has changed. Hey, you soft. can't you can't yell at players the Old same way you Gruden used to. Would have said to Antonio Brown, "Listen, you fucking pussy, put your fucking helmet on yes. and get on the." Fucking feel. Here I you think go. you may be that helmet on. You oh, put yeah. that helmet on. You put that helmet the, on. What would old that John Lynch knows would have said? You shut the fuck up and get out yeah. on that. Fucking you what wear, would he say to AB right now? Helmet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I, that's what I just said. I think he's overcorrected. Yeah. You wear the kicker's helmet. I think people told soft. told him continuously, you can't be like you used to be. You can't be like you used to be. And now he's gone too far the other yeah, way. He's a pussy. He might even called him boy. Uh, Jonathan Abrams giving him lip back, but like in a fun way. But it's still lip. Like that's your head coach that you're talking to. No, I I, no. I was taken aback by that scene. Not our problem. That's what I'm gonna file. Definitely at. a scene worth checking out. If so you, I'm gonna seen file it. that under. Not our fucking problem. It's fun to watch though. Yeah. All right. So what do we got here? Uh, emails. All right. Email. We have one email. email. We're gonna leave you with one special off season email. Yeah. Please give us some more content. Well, Please what, give us some emails and when is the help ne- us get through this preseason. When is the next time we're going to do this? Tell them, because you're different. We have not discussed that yet, because the next we usually record on Sunday nights for the preseason. The next game is not being played until Monday night. So if we come back here Sunday night, we will essentially have nothing to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there'll still be some, but there won't be a game to talk about. So we'll have to figure it out. It's okay. a touch and go. Okay. So with that... Touch so- and go... That's what they call Joe. Touch and go Joe. <laughs> Touch and go Joe. <laughs> Since back in the day, around the way. Okay. Here we go. Matt Matterson. Whew. Take a you sip want of some water. water. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. This is uh it's really not that long. It, no. Can I ask you a, a very serious question about where we are right now? What? Is she does that candle say best meme ever? No. No, mom, probably. Mm, that definitely says meme. Right? Well, maybe like... Oh, that, Mimi. Mimi. That was, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, grandma? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Maybe. Oh, yeah, Because yeah, that's that's spelled is. like meme. That's what it is. Uh, but yeah, I was like... No, yeah. no, 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 no. I was like, I, I'm, my, my brain can't compute that it's a candle. This is best meme. Right. I would... I would... That, I would that, yeah, that's, that's that's would... That would merit... It just was like... Yeah, it just didn't... That, that makes much better. That would merit question. Can I ask I you a I've been question staring at it. about like, where we are right I'm like, now? Memo. Mom? I, I saw you look at it before, and I was like, "It just." I didn't consider that, that you looked so at the much, writing. That I makes thought, a lot of sense. I thought it might have been a fake candle, to be honest with you. I, I didn't know that it was a real candle. I was like, maybe you're just checking the authenticity well, and, of the and candle. Mimi, I would spell M-I-M-I, but now right. I get Because I, I thought that's how it was. I, I would have guessed that that's how that yeah. would have been spelled. So I don't know but where, it, you, know, where got you their own thing. Yeah, Meme. Baby, yeah. where do you get the personalized candle like this out here? Which one? The one about Mimi. Pretty sure it's Meme. I don't know my mom got it. Okay. All right. All right. Do you think she had it made or do you think she just came across it? I think she found it. Okay. All right. With that said, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a French thing. Meme? Yeah, but that's not what it would be in this situation. All right. Matt Matterson says, a novel, Matt Madison, that's another one. a novel of an email. Just to make it easy for Joe, I made my email easy to read. So what he's done is he's enlarged the font for us. <laughs> he's brought it from what? What did you say? Uh, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> He's going off one or two font. What a guy. Uh, you know? Hats off. Class. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Best meme ever. When I was talking about spite. Or <laughs> spate. <laughs> well, and spate, the third, fourth S- string quarterback. Oh, I thought he meant height. Uh, but no, okay. <laughs> In my recent email. I was comparing his height to Mullins and Bethard's height individually. <laughs> oh, I remember now. Remember that? No, not at all. Not even a bit. Oh, the way he worded the last time about the, uh, he said, Spite is taller than Mullins and Beat Hard. And it sounded like he said combined. Like it sounded like that's how he said it. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, I think we made fun of it last time. Yeah, that's it. He's correct. He's he's cl- he's clarifying that he didn't mean. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God he's clarifying. Right. At least you understand what I'm saying. Here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Before the draft happened, I picked Bosa to be drafted, and I expressed my excitement for it. Steve responded that I should be cautious because it's Buckner, Armstead, and Thomas, and they haven't been doing great in the previous seasons. Well, Steve. I want to use your same warning to you, but I just listened to Richard Sherman's interview with Greg Papa and Lund on KNBR. Sherman had a lot of positive things to say about Bosa while watching him during practice. Bosa is going to miss at least the preseason games because of an ankle sprain. That is not good. Hopefully we see him in week one of the regular season. That is not good. (laughs) Right? No, it it is not. I've been hopeful for Kalik, but now my opinions on him are the same opinions for Garnett. They have to prove why they deserve to be here on the team and in the league. Wow. Chris, can you start a file on your computer of, like, a glossary of Joe's terms? (laughs) Joe-isms? Yeah, and, like, just, like, any time one comes up, like, Steve Rowell, like, nudge you, like, like, there's one. And, like, by the end of the season, I just want to see how long that list is. Yeah. Like, I've just heard seven in the last four minutes. Kalik, Matterson, like, all this stuff is just made up yeah. insanity, and I, I kind of want to build a glossary. Yeah. But what was, like um, a, it could be, like, a thing that... Ahmed for, for, yeah, for it, Ahmad Brooks. Yeah, it could Ahmad be, like, Brooks. for the beginners, like, when you hear this, this is what it means. Yeah. Get up to speed with the Gold Blooded Podcast. <laughs> Current lingo. Yeah. All right. You hear Big Dick Johnson? We're talking about Dante Johnson. <laughs> Fuck him. His, yeah, dick, his dick has shrunk significantly for me. And then just some definitions. Like, uh, what was the one you said? You said a uh, boot. Yeah, boot. yeah, boot is a normal one, but today there was a real weird one. Boot and Annie? Boot and Annie, yeah. <laughs> that was the new one today. A boot and Annie. <laughs> All right. Which I don't. I, uh, good luck spelling that, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't even know who you'd have to call to get the spelling on that. All right. Now to the first preseason game. I watched the first half of the game. What I can say is that it's the first game and it's preseason. And it was on is a Saturday. Is that clear enough? For you? And it was against the Cowboys. <laughs> So they, oh so they have time to work on their penalties. What really bums me is that Trent Taylor is out for a while due to a broken foot, and they lost a swing tackle on the offensive line. Hearing this makes me worried for the rest of the team when did, September comes. Did you read that right? <laughs> yes. Are you sure? Start with what? Bums. Uh, what really bums me <laughs> is that Trent Taylor is out I'm for a while. One hundred percent adopting that. <laughs> no more bums me out. Just straight bums me. What really? Bums you know what really bums me, Joe? What bums me is. Bums that's a hundred. I'm a hundred percent adopting that. Sounds way better than bums me out. It kind of has like a California vibe to it. Yeah, and it's kind of like a shortened, like slangy way of yeah, saying bums, bums me. Out. me. Rob, I have some news. If Did the, he say Rob? I have some news, or you just no? Saying, I'm ah. saying <laughs> stop everything. <coughs> if the rest of the audience approves on a new intro for the podcast, for the I will do my best to create one. If there's any season. Really, 
I am out. Hey, what is this virus-free little ditty on the bottom of that download? Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, you must send with like an ADP. He probably has ADP. Well, you can do your automatic replies. We have options oh, here. Yeah, you can do, doing, I agree with you, love it, or thanks for the update. I'm going to go with thanks for the update. Yeah, for sure. No, thanks for the update. I think it should be, I love it. We want enthusiasm. We can't do it again. Oh, yeah, we already committed. Fuck. Can't. Can't go back. Final answer. Next time we gotta think through a little more because yeah. you might be right. I love it. Might have been the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> All the way. Fuck yeah. We want that beat, Madison. Give us a hot beat with some soothing vocals. Actually, I can confirm if that's him or Gmail. Let's see. I'm gonna say that's him. That's him. It's just him that has the uh, AVG email scanner. Yeah. I'm gonna say that it's. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna go. Different route. If there is a listener out there that doesn't want you to write an intro for us, they have found the wrong podcast. <laughs> because they are not on the same page as the rest of the listeners and all four of us. Yeah. Because any not. person that is part of this, whatever this is, Podbean community, one million percent <laughs> wants yeah. a Madison intro. I Yo, actually, the fuck's all the Podbeaners There is no <laughs> doubt. I, I actually person. I actually spoke to the Podbeaners directly uh, <laughs> earlier today, and they were curious if there was going to be a Madison theme song, and I told them I didn't know yet, but here's the answer, only if they want it, which, hey, if they ask, they want it, so it's coming. All right, everybody, who's the next game, Steve? Tell these fucks. Uh, who do we play? I don't know. I don't know who we play. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't Denver, matter. right? Yeah, we have joint practices with them. Is Peyton Manning the quarterback there still? Is he quarterbacking? <laughs> The, the outfit. Uh, is he quarterback he's the in the third outfit? string now? So he'll be doing <laughs> quarterback in the outfit this year. Don't no. no. Flacco. What about Elway? <clears throat> he might be he'll better be there. Yeah, he probably uh, give him their best shot. To be honest, I hate him. Yeah, I'd like. How about a fist fight with Elway and Lynch, and the winner wins? Oh, Lynch would fucking destroy Elway. Yeah. What I'd like to see is Elway. I'd watch though for sure. What I would watch yeah. is Elway and Marino fuck. <laughs> Of course you would. Why, why Why? wouldn't you steer the conversation away from fighting to men fucking? <laughs> why wouldn't you do that? I would, I'll tell you one thing's for sure. I would watch a fist fight between John Elway <laughs> yeah. and John Lynch much longer and in depth than I would watch this preseason <laughs> game that's coming up. <laughs> I'd be much more intent on it. I would have more details to talk about when we came back here. Same could be said for me watching them have sex. I mean... <laughs> Elway and Marino. Elway and Marino. I don't want Lynch. That's a real odd couple. That's a real odd couple. Elway and Marino. But I'm yeah. I mean, they belong together. They but, they but, came in together. But I'm obsessed with it. Yeah, now. but it's a real. That's a real odd. They're not like cut from the same cloth. Those yeah. Two. Like not the young version to the now. It's like I can't get the thought out of my head now. It's oh, odd. Fuck. It it's, is. It's, I never let the thought into my head. That's the strange uh, part about it. I picture it in a stadium with lights. Good times. So, All right. We'll leave you on that. I can't wait to change the name of this podcast to coming out when Joe finally <laughs> comes yeah, out. I've seen that before. That's a good one. What is it? Them fucking? Mark Davis looks like microwaved John Gruden leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, show him the picture. That's pretty good. Is, yeah. he, is he still That's alive? That's Look, pretty there's good. John Gruden. Yeah. There's Mark Davis. Oh, That's pretty good. That's John Gruden microwaved. <laughs> That's pretty good. I Would you type in best meme ever? I saw it. Just on, it on yeah, it. yeah. I saw it on Reddit or something. I hate the whole the whole Davis family's creepy. Always has been. When in, sure, in the two times we've chosen to, you don't have a mic, so yeah. <laughs> speak, speak yeah, up. not sure if anybody can hear Chris <laughs> talking. I don't know if we we've done um, what's it called. Where we make fun of people. Shoe slinger? Shoe slinger. We've oh, done we've done Mark time. Davis numerous oh, yeah. times. We went over the article that said that he drives like 400 miles for his haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. We said he I think you we brought it up. He, yeah, we said I think he we trashed it. You brought that up. That's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. the haircut is it's <laughs> never going to not be funny, it though. It literally looks like a doll. <laughs> like a, That's where he goes to the doll yeah. factory. Exactly. <laughs> This is a machine that just does it. <laughs> he flies to Asia to make sure he like, gets that haircut every time. I totally get some people are unfortunate looking and there's nothing you can do about it, but...
there's something he could do about it. Yeah. Like, it's not like there's nothing he could do about yeah, it. Yeah, playing he, traffic. He, like, goes, he goes to a specific... There's something he could do about this. Th- that's the closest barber that specializes in Down Syndrome haircuts. He's a fucking Fuck billionaire. Yeah. They need to, like, have happy colors <laughs> and, like, you know, soft fucking shapes around. When like, is that how he wants to look? I, he I drives have... 400 miles to look like it. Yeah, to the, to the <laughs> airfield to get to the fucking Japanese fucking factory. <laughs> That makes the Chucky doll. Get the fuck out of here. End this shit bag. Goodbye.